Good morning, welcome to the workshop. I'm Ron. Today we're going to look at how to repair a broken angle poise 1227 arm. You can see how the previous owner was able to repair this broken arm. This one is what's supposed to look like these additional straps of where the repair has been made. What we're going to do today is remove these temporary repair, put an aluminium insert inside of the arm and then weld the two halves together. When the welding is complete, we'll drill out the aluminium insert allowing the pivot points to be inserted. So our first step is to disassemble this repair. Now you can see the, uh, the two broken halves. So not only do we have to repair the original snap, we have to make good the holes drilled for the repair. The important thing is to ensure that you get the two halves mated correctly. This arm, luckily enough, does not carry any cables up its centre. So having this blocked with a solid rod will not be an issue. So our next step would be to take a round aluminium bar. This is a 6.35 millimeters or quarter inch in old school. Take a quarter inch round aluminium bar and insert it into the arm. Obviously the quarter inch won't fit at the moment so it'll need to be dressed down with a file to make a good friction fit. Now we've tried hollow and square rod. The benefits of using a round rod is when it's inserted there will be a gap in each four corners where the square rod leaves a space between the round section. That gap can be filled with aluminium brazing giving a much stronger joint so we shall insert that into there attach the other end and then use low temperature aluminium brazing rods it's available on the website to weld the two halves together so our first step is to dress down the aluminium round rod to fit inside of the existing arm. So what I have here is a selection of files from a medium to, to a fine. My quarter inch aluminium rod. And this occasion, because I don't want to damage any more of the rod, I'm going to wrap it in a cloth before I grip it in the vise. So in this case we are only going to need enough of the rod inside to cover the brake. So it looks like That, that would be more than enough, about an inch and a half. I'll start with a quite a coarse file. And file it till perhaps the 
three millimeters of the curvature has gone flat I would normally just do it from underneath, but in this case I'll turn it round so that you can see I'm doing pretty much the same again. And show the flat bits on the bottom. I can do it by touch, but if you wish to you can mark it out. That's a good friction fit. I'll show you a bit closer. You can see where the section's been filed flat, opposite each other, top, bottom, left, and right. That will allow the end bit to slide on. With a friction fit. It's just got to be pushed quite hard. So the next step is to cut this off to length and insert it into both halves. So once you're happy with the friction fit of the aluminium rod, take a little bit of heat and just evenly warm up the rod. And now we need to look at the length required of the rod and then cut it with a hacksaw and ensuring that it doesn't protrude to the end so that would be fine the next step is to cut the rod at the mark it's a bit difficult this way File that nice and clean, ensure that's got a nice friction fit, and insert that end. So, using a file, I'll just dress the ends off so there's no hacksaw marks. Remember to clamp the arm and protect it from the jaws of the vice. One thing to bear in mind is that the forks on the end has to line up with the forks on the other end. Don't have it one set one way and the other set the other. In this case, like that. You can see how the insert supports both ends. Where the arm was bent and fractured, there's two high peaks here. It's best to take a file when it's aligned like this and remove any high spots. Clean up the material, make sure everything aligns and we're ready for the next step. Try not to take too much material off, but usually when the arms fracture it does distort the metal. It's a lot easier to sort that bends and billows and kinks and before you actually start soldering everything together. Once you've got the main defects sorted out, use a finer file just to remove any of the more coarse filing marks. You can see now that the pots line up quite well. There's no sharp edges. And we're pretty much ready to begin the soldering process. We have here uh, the broken arm with the magnetic clamp. 
as we're going to be heating this up to about 300 degrees you must protect whatever work surface you're working on if you take a wire brush in this case this is a spark plug wire brush and clean all the paint off and the debris the trick with getting a good joint is to try to get the aluminium as clean as possible aluminium oxidizes or rusts really quick so the best way to get a good solid joint is to have the aluminium nice and bright just before you apply the soldering rod. Here are our soldering rods. These are extra low temperature aluminium brazing rods. They're available on our website. The trick with brazing rods is to remember it is the temperature of the workpiece not the temperature of the blowtorch that melts the rod. I'll say that again. Get the workpiece hot enough in order to melt the rod when you touch it. You can only weld this once because if you try to touch it up later on it would melt the existing weld. So this is a one shot deal. To that effect have tools handy to hold everything in the correct orientation while the aluminium brazen rod is setting or cooling down. In some cases you could actually use a bit of wire to hold everything together. As these things do move, especially when they get hot you'll find the joint will open up a bit more. So I've cleaned all the aluminium up it's all nice and bright I have my tools ready to manipulate the end if need be in this case I have uh, two different types of gloves one so I can actually touch the the workpiece and one a finer glove to be able to manipulate the tools so I've just turned this over because I notice that the top section has a much larger gap so as the solder flows through I intend to try to fill that gap here and let it run down the sides. So I'll get some heat on and see how it goes. Just keep testing to see if the rod can melt. As you can see, it's the it's the heat in the workpiece that is melting the aluminium, not the other way around. Ensure you get as much aluminium into the opening as you can. You can always use the heat gun just to help it smooth out. Very, very gentle when it comes to cementing the last of it. Well, that's pretty much it done. Leave it alone until it cools off. 
to not be too concerned about the rough finish when this is cooled down you can dress it with a file in this case this lamp is to be repainted so after this is cooled and being dressed down with a file any imperfections can be filled with car body filler and then painted but we'll just give this a few moments to cool down the excess aluminium can be dressed off with a file to recreate the shape of the arm that's our next step we're taking a file we can just dress up the aluminium do that on all four sides may take a while so I'll be back to you in a moment so now you can see that we've dressed the excess aluminium brazing rod away there is a couple of hills and hollows it's very difficult to see on camera but these lower pieces will be left and filled with car body filler it's important not to remove too much of the brazing rod simply match the existing lines of the arm that you have at this point here you can see where the the hole for the pivot needs to be drilled that's our next step if you look at the original arm you can see it has a bush a brass insert four mil drill a four millimeter drill fits in very nice i place two screws through the uh, the holes in both arms both the repaired arm and the original arm and the other end has a twist drill i'm going to use a four mil drill and use the existing arm as a guide to go all the way through the repaired arm and out through that end i'll do that on my uh, bench drill so I have a 4 mil drill, I have the two arms securely clamped, so remember your safety, put the goggles on. So there you have it, the hole all the way through. So now with the arm repaired, we can move on to the next stage, which is preparing all the components for painting. Remember there's more guides on how to restore your angle poise lamp at our site, Relight Lamps. The link can be found in the description below. Hope this was of some help. My name's Ron, catch you next time.